Hello, I'm Mathieu from Ludovox and today I'm going to give you an overview of Arkham Horror the card game. So Arkham Horror the card game is a game for one to two players ages 14 and up and it plays for an hour to 90 minutes. In this game you're going to be an investigator and you want to investigate um, something, some disappearances or whatever. So you are going to uh, be represented by those tiny cards on locations, but also by a bigger card with your uh, abilities. So you have uh, a health score and mental health score, also some special abilities and some uh, basic abilities such as strength or uh, quickness or uh, resolve. And you're going to also to have a personal deck and this personal deck is very important because you're going to improve it over the course of different scenarios. In the call box, you're going to have a booklet. So it's a campaign booklet. You have three different interwoven scenarios. So uh, if you do something very special on scenario one, you're going to have consequences on scenario two and three. So you have uh, different uh, resolutions for every scenario and it also tells you what to do and the flavor of each scenario. So for the uh, introduction scenario, the first one, you gather in your study uh, because there are some disappearances around. So people uh, just disappeared and went missing and they are found mangled and half eaten. So you gather because you think it's not the work of some rabid beasts. And then uh, something happens and you are locked in your study and you want to do something. So what you do in your turn is very simple. First, you're going to have the mythos phase. In the mythos phase, you are going to do some bad stuff, but you don't do it on the first turn. So let's move on to the second phase, which is the investigation phase. In the investigation phase, um, you may perform up to three actions per player. A player is going to play his or her own actions, then another player is going to act to perform his turn fully. So you're going to choose the order of those, but uh, you have to do your turn in, your, in its entirety. So uh, the actions could be drawing cards. You can draw a card and this is an action. You can also get a resource from the, the stock. You can also uh, do something like play a card. So for example, if I had two resources, I could spend them to play a baseball bat. This is an action. You could also um, use an action on a card. So if there is an arrow symbol in a card, you can use it as an action. So for example, the baseball bat can be used to fight against monsters or cultists. Um, you can also perform tests to get this investigation clue token. So these clue tokens are very important because they help you go through the game and you're going to get uh, to need these uh, to solve the act cards. These cards are the core of the advancement of the game. These ones are the bad ones and these ones are the good ones. So when you solve them, uh, you need a certain number of investigation tokens to solve them. And when you solve them, you move forward. But first, how to get a token, you're going to tell me. So um, to get a token, you need to perform a test, an investigation test. And this is going to be uh, determined by your occult uh, score. And you want to measure it to that score. But you're going to draw one of these uh, tokens. And most of the time, they are very negative. So they give you malices to your score. Uh, very few of them are positive and sometimes they bear special symbols such as the cultists, the skull and the broken shield. All of these are depicted on the scenario uh, rule. You have a special rule and you have an automatic failure. And finally, you have the elder sign. The elder sign will trigger your special power. It is usually super good and you want to uh, take this one as much as possible. Unfortunately, they are all in a bowl or bag or um, device of your choosing and you will pick blindly, randomly one of them. So you are going to modify your, um, your score with the difficulty of the test and you need to match it to get the token or perform the attack or whatever. So uh, when you have enough tokens, you spend them and you read the back of the card. And in this case, uh, you, f you suddenly find an exit, a way out of your study. So uh, the, the game tells you to put different locations. So you have an antechamber and there is a cellar 
and there is a living room and there is a um, an attic. So you start on the antechamber. And the locations are closed here. But if you visit the locations, you might discover some new horrible things and things to do and also investigation tokens to pick up. And this is how the game advances. Once you move to the third card, you may win the game depending on the victory conditions on the card. And um, this is how the game progresses. So you have the mythos phase, which I didn't explain yet, the investigation phase, the monster phase, because you're going to find monsters and cultists. Um, they have keywords and uh, special stats, so they're going to move, to attack, um, maybe to uh, hinder you. So, for example, they might freeze you or whatever. And uh, they stay on location. So uh, if you want to flee a location, you need to perform special tests. And after that, you have a cleanup phase in which you clean up uh, turn effects. And finally, uh, you will move on back to the mythos phase. So in the mythos phase, two things happen. The first thing that happens is that you put a fate token on the bad plot cards. And this is super bad. This is the timer of the game, and when you reach the number that is written here, you flip the card and read what it does. And usually it's not very good, and when you reach the third one, usually you have pretty much lost the game. So this is the first thing that happens here. The second thing is that you draw the first uh, card of the encounter deck, which is this deck. And sometimes it's a monster, sometimes it's a... Uh, curse, a uh, spell, uh, something terrifying, for example, this uh, putrefied or rotting remains uh, that horrify you, so you need to take horror tests uh, or you take uh, horror points. So uh, these uh, horror points and life points, wounds, are what make you lose the game also. If you have more wounds than your health, you are eliminated, and if both players are eliminated, or one player if you play solo, um, it's the end of the game and you've lost. So that's how you basically win or lose the game. At the end of the game, you're going to customize your deck by adding cards or replacing cards, uh, because you have to keep the same number of cards. Um, the characters have some limitations, so if you have a spellcaster, you're going to have um, more spellcasting cards and you're going to pick new cards or improve the cards from the uh, reserve of cards that you have. If you have several expansions of Arkham Horror, you may uh, pick from those as well. So sometimes there are big improvements in cards, so cards become less expensive, perform their actions better, that kind of thing. So um, the scenarios, as I told in the beginning, are very interwoven together and cause and consequence are very important. So, for example, if you rescue a character or if you uh, burn down your house, something might happen in the next scenario. And you sometimes you can expect it, sometimes you can't. So, that's it for Arkham Horror, the card game. This cooperative investigation card game in which you have deep, immersive scenarios. Bye-bye!